in March of 2020, uh, we got the notification that there was basically the first case of community spread of COVID in San Francisco and everything shut down. We got together and thought about how we could pivot our HIV research program, which had been highly successful over the preceding two decades, to understand the long-term consequences of COVID. This was before people were talking about on social media, before it was in the New York Times. And we had all these people coming in with these unusual stories, totally independent of each other. Some of the most striking cases of that are young men or women who now require assistive devices to get around. Uh, we began to see people uh, who were experiencing long COVID, and we realized that this was going to be a big problem that we really needed to understand. Long COVID has devastated over 20 million people across our country and 200 million people around the world. It's personal to me because one of my sons contracted this disease about a year ago. And since then, we've experienced firsthand how debilitating and disheartening this condition can be. My wife, Judy, and I have extensively researched long COVID and all that research has led to a company called PolyBio Research Foundation. They are the best group positioned to cure long COVID. We're now proud to announce that we're partnering with PolyBio to launch the Long COVID Cure Initiative. It's a critical effort to identify diagnostics, treatments, and ultimately a cure for this terrible condition. Starting in 2021, we united many of the top scientists in the world into an international consortium to rapidly study the long COVID disease process. And thanks to this research, we have huge leads on what is making patients sick. One key finding is that some long COVID patients do not fully clear the SARS-CoV-2 virus from their bodies after infection. Instead, a small amount of virus can persist in their tissues where it can drive immune dysfunction and other problems. What we've really been finding is that SARS-CoV-2 is able to persist for a long period of time in various tissues across the body. The gut, the bone marrow, the brain, uh, and other deeper tissues that are actually very difficult to sample. We've also been finding that there is profound changes in immune responses and inflammation in these tissues as well. So we've also instigated a program to look at pet imaging. So this is non-invasive imaging where we can look at T-cell activation across the body. We've also been developing studies to look directly at the virus. And what we've been finding is that there is also residual T-cell activation across much of the body following SARS-CoV-2 infection. We've been able to see evidence for pieces of this virus persisting for months or even years after an infection. We need to run strategic clinical trials to target this persistent virus, immune dysfunction, and other long COVID drivers of disease. What's next is that we really wanna continue pushing the envelope in terms of both diagnostics and therapeutics. Uh, we need to move beyond single therapy treatments for long COVID and begin to piece together combinations targeting the different biological mechanisms of long COVID, kind of hit this disease from um, multiple angles to try to get people feeling better. But this is the challenge. To optimally run these trials, we need validated diagnostic tests. Tests that clearly and accurately measure persistent SARS-CoV-2 and other long COVID drivers of disease. But currently, not a single validated diagnostic test exists for long COVID. To solve this problem, we're launching the Long COVID Cure Initiative, or LCCI. LCCI is designed as a full pipeline that starts with validating the most promising long COVID diagnostic test and culminates in working with pharma and biotech companies to use these tests for treatment studies that target the root causes of disease. It's the next phase of our mission, not just to understand long COVID, but to cure it. The first program in this initiative is VIPER, a project to validate the top diagnostic tests for persistent SARS-CoV-2 and related biological drivers of long COVID by running them head to head. Our research is finding that SARS-CoV-2 often persists in tissue, which we collect from body sites like the gut, 
via biopsy procedures to find the virus. But these biopsy procedures are invasive, expensive, and not possible for the average doctor to perform. Meanwhile, teams in our network have cutting edge diagnostic test platforms that can identify tiny amounts of the virus, its proteins, or immune-associated signals in easily accessible samples like blood or saliva. And that's where Viper comes in. The program will collect a central set of accessible samples and gut tissue from the same extremely well-characterized long COVID patients and healthy volunteers. Then, five to eight collaborating teams engaged in diagnostic test development for SARS-CoV-2 persistence will receive identical sets of Viper blood or saliva samples. We'll compare each team's diagnostic test measurement using the accessible samples against the tissue-based measures of persistence to determine the accuracy of each test for assessing viral persistence. This Viper infrastructure will be expanded to validate diagnostic tests that measure other biological drivers of long COVID, such as blood vessel function, immune dysregulation, and mitochondrial dysfunction. The top diagnostics identified by Viper will be communicated directly to pharmaceutical companies who will work with us to use the validated tests to monitor response to treatment in long COVID clinical trials. Another huge benefit is that many of the diagnostic test platforms validated by Viper can be leveraged into the more accurate identification and eventual treatment of other chronic infections, such as Lyme disease or the Epstein-Barr virus. There is monumental talent behind Viper. Viper will be directed and based out of the UCSF LINK study. The LINK team has deep virology expertise and are globally recognized for transforming HIV from a deadly disease into a treatable illness. In fact, Viper's design is based on a program run by the team that successfully validated key diagnostic tests for the HIV virus. You also need the capacity to do it quickly, to be nimble, and you also, very importantly, need to be able to build up an infrastructure that allows for collaboration. PolyBio's collaborative network allows Viper samples to be rapidly shared. PolyBio and their research partners are ready right now to launch the Viper initiative. The protocols are approved, the partnerships are in place, and the science is ready to go. We just need philanthropic capital to make this vision a reality. We're raising $8 million to launch Viper, and it will be the flagship program of the Long COVID Cure Initiative. My family has already committed $1 million to help make this a reality, and we hope you'll join us in this effort. To recognize our founding supporters, we've created three levels of commitment. The first $500,000 commitment will allow you to be a founder and co-chair of this important effort. A $250,000 donation will allow you to be an innovative circle partner, and $100,000 will allow you to be a member of the Accelerator Club. Together, we can turn this groundbreaking science into a cure for the terrible condition, and we really appreciate your support to make this happen. Thank you very much.